basically i'll focus broadly speaking today on the theme of uh, of criticism that criticizing the philosophies that are considered scripturally wrong that are considered logically wrong you know how to so criticize sensitively so and normally we may think that criticism itself is insensitive that so the idea is that if we are if we are going to criticize is that itself an act of insensitivity so some people may so our topic is going to be how to criticize insensitively or somebody may say that this itself is like a oxymoron oxymoron is where that two this two opposite ideas are brought together like somebody uses the word this is that was a brilliantly stupid answer now was it brilliant or was it stupid so brilliantly stupid could be other examples of oxymoron or that was that was an energetically lazy action now is it energetic or is it lazy so the idea is sometimes oxymorons are used to convey two contradictory ideas together so yoga maya is an oxymoron in our tradition maya is that which disconnects us from krishna yoga is that which is connect this connects us from krishna so there is a, basically a deeper meaning beyond the contradiction beyond apparent contradiction so we need to look at how we can apl apply this principle to criticizing sensitively so first of all uh, when we talk about criticizing so is criticizing now should we criticize at all we say never criticize anyone else well in one sense when you talk about philosophy philosophy essentially is the search for truth philosophy tattva darshan that itself means feeling is love and so force is truth tattva darshan tattva is truth darshan is seeing so when we are trying to speak what that which is the truth that also means pointing out what is not the truth and that will be seen as that may be seen as criticism by others so if somebody says that i would i will never criticize anyone any anything or anyone well then we might have to stay silent throughout so it is we can't be uh, we can't be pussy footing or waffling around the point that ultimately philosophical education is a point is about emphasizing certain things and that means de emphasizing or pointing out the deficiencies of certain things so if we consider the gita itself what krishna is doing is there are multiple options there are multiple choices so for example fight or don't fight hmm so we could take it as further generalized as engaged dharma no engaged dharma or disengaged dharma disengaged means renounce dharma that arjuna is himself asking that i want to do dharma i want to do that is the right thing to do but what is the right thing is it engaged now krishna is choosing between the two and krishna is recommending in engaged dharma he talks about bhakti yoga he talks about karma yoga in disengaged dharma he talks about gyan yoga he talks about dhyan yoga so he is in one sense emphasizing this and within this also he is emphasizing the active active engage active spirituality engaged dharma and he is talking about bhakti yoga so in one sense philosophical education does require us 
to point out what is right and what is wrong. So in that sense, a certain amount of what might be perceived as criticism will come out. We cannot avoid that. So Krishna himself gives a very valuable guideline that comes in 1715. This is austerity or discipline of speech. Mm -hmm. So Krishna talks about Anudvega karam bakyam satyam priyahitam chayat swadhyaya besanam chayiva vanmayam tapa uchate. So he's talking about four characteristics over here. I'll try to place those characteristics in a particular context. Let's look at the characteristics what they are. Anudvega, he says, non agitating. Anudvega karam vakyam. So we'll just look at these four items that Krishna is speaking. Satyam, anudvega karam vakyam, satyam, truthful, priya, pleasing, and hitam, beneficial. So let's try to look at these now. Of course, the fifth is speak according to scripture, or it is more of uh, use your tongue to speak scripture. It is swadhyaya besanam chaiva. That is more like reciting scripture specifically. So that is one exercise which traditionally was done when people would recite the Vedas and we also recite songs, we recite prayers, we recite verses. So that is that is also recitation is there, scriptural recitation, but I would put that in a slightly different category because that may not be something which we can do on a regular basis in our normal conversations. Of course, we can say we can quote scripture, but Krishna is not so much talking here about quoting scripture. He's not talking about quoting parampara, quoting Guru Shastra. So that is the fifth attribute, which I will, for the timing, not focus. This is on, let's look at these four points and we will look at a, a time-tested method of analysis or method of determining dharma. Dharma so how to determine? So that means what dharma here refers to what is the right thing to do? And how do we determine what is the right thing to do? That if you want to consider, the Mahabharat talks broadly about three criteria for deciding this. And these are, in one sense, once we think about it, they are common sense criteria, the content. So what exactly am I doing? So based on that, we may be able to decide, is this the right thing or the wrong thing? So am I speaking a lie? Am I cheating someone? Am I robbing someone? Am I harming someone? Hmm? What is my, so we could look at that way. Now, before the content, we have the intent. Why am I doing it? And then after the action is done, the content of the action is performed, then there is the consequence. What is the result of the action? So in, if we consider this three, then this, this is a universal criteria. So th these three are universal parameters. And we can apply this to anything. What am I doing? Why am I doing it? And what is the likely result of doing it? I look at that and I decide this, what is the right thing to do and what is not the right thing to do. Now I can apply, I can, can say applied to speech. How can I apply this to my speech? When I'm speaking something, so if we consider the four criteria that Krishna has talked about, now in terms of content, Krishna says that, we can say that Krishna is telling that be truthful. Speak that which is the truth. So truth is in content. Okay, truth means, of course, it means that which is philosophically true, that which is aligned according to scripture. Now, what is truthful can itself be a big philosophical discussion. But broadly, let's say that scripture is truthful is that which aligns with two things. It aligns with we could say 
प्रत्यक्ष दैट मीन्स वॉट वॉट इज नॉर्मली कॉल दस फैक्ट्स दैट विच अलाइंस विथ अनुमान दैट मीन्स इट मेक्स सेंस दैट इज लॉजिक एंड इट अलाइंस विथ शब्द then that is that is what is called as verbal testimony quoting authority so so verbal testimony is a idea that can apply in various areas so we are quoting authority so let's take this as a broad criteria for understanding what is truthful so it aligns with our practical experience so don't go over there there's water and you will slip and fall okay is that really true yeah there is water over there maybe from maybe that there is some kind of uh, mirage over there so you are not seeing the water from here but i can see it from here so it aligns with pratyaksha we tell somebody don't do drugs why why not well those who have taken drugs they've had serious effects they got addicted well have you done that no but i have seen many people who have done that and that the human body is the same the drugs have the similar effect so it's a inference so logic here means specific logical inference so we can use inference and shabda shastra says so so we could say content krishna is talking about satyam satyam he says speak that but then content is not the only criteria for deciding what is right then we can look at the intent so krishna actually starts with the intent non agitating anudveg karam so speak in a way that does not agitate others and in one sense krishna has actually echoed this th- spoken this already in 1215 and yasma no dvijate loko loka no dvijate cha yah हर्षा मर्ष भयो द्वेगैर मुक्तो यह सच मे प्रिय सो ही सेइंग दैट डोंट एजिटेट अदर्स सो एज नाउ नॉन एजिटेटिंग मींस स्पीक इन अ वे दैट विल नॉट बी एजिटेटिंग टू अदर्स सो नाउ हाउ डू आई नो दैट वेल दैट इज वेयर आवर इंटेलिजेंस कम्स इन my intent i'll talk about intelligence a little bit more but with our intention okay this person is in this situation i my purpose is not to disturb them my purpose is to help them my purpose is to benefit this person and that brings us so i'll talk about benefiting a little bit later again but the, again the point here is when we go into a situation our purpose krishna says don't let it be to agitate the other person in one sense we can say everybody in this world is agitated because the world is in agitating place so speak speak in a way that decreases the mental temperature that that helps the person feel a greater sense of calmness of security reassurance so try to give that the bhagavatam says the purpose of a purpose of who, the, uh, those who travel across the world sharing krishna's message is to guarantee them fearlessness in this world the world is a place of fear and we reassure them that actually the lord ex- that krishna exists krishna has a plan and krishna's plan is always working so the anxiety that is there in this world try to remove that or at least reduce that as much as we can and then so, so speak in a non agitating way krishna himself we could go into specific examples of this but i don't want i will apply this specifically for dealing with uh, other schools of thought a little later but now when we talk about consequence so the way i analyze this is that we can look at it as anudvega karam vakyam satyam priya hitam chayat so that which is pleasing and that which is beneficial hitam so now 
we now i am analyzing this in such a way that i am putting these two within the consequence now why specifically these two in the consequence because in one sense we can't know in advance we can't know fully in advance what will be the consequence what will be the result of what we speak what will be the consequence of a particular action a doctor may say yeah this particular medicine is good for you even if it is even if it is a bitter tasting but sometimes the doctor gives the medicine the right what seems to be the right medicine with the right intention but then the medicine has a contraindicative effect so in one sense so to no consequence what is going to the consequence for that in one sense we need intelligence we need, it needs to no consequence one is intelligence we could say to estimate to guess and then after intelligence we also need observation observation to evaluate so we could say in now from this perspective you can connect the non agitating with the pleasing right okay my intent is to benefit the person okay this patient is having a lot of pain let's give them this medicine which will be pain medicate but then that medication has a contraindicative effect oh okay we should not give this medicine and make a note in the case history of the patient that they, they react negatively to this particular medicine so in future we will not give this medicine we will give some other medicine so we have to observe so so similarly with respect to speaking in one sense if we take the medical metaphor for speaking medical metaphors are very useful in many contexts if you use the medical metaphor then we have to consider what does it mean that speech is like medicine or more precisely you could say words the words that we speak are meant to be me having a medicinal effect so just as the medicine cures so what does the, the words do the words are meant to actually just as the medicine cures disease the spot does it the speech do speech cures or corrects misconceptions but sometimes a medicine can have a contraindicative effect so contraindicative effect means what happens is that at one level the medicine was meant to cure one thing but then what might happen is that when it is contraindicative when it is contraindicative what might happen is that by correcting one thing it harms other things hmm? so in healing one bodily part hmm, may harm other bodily parts so for example okay this is for your di this is for your digestion like this is uh, okay this is for your digestion but something we take for the digestion that has a contraindicative effect on the heart many times there are what we call as side effects so now can the doctor say that oh these side effects i don't care no you as a doctor you have to care and in some situations the side effects may actually overshadow the Uh, the may intended effect so sometimes what may happen is the side effect may actually be far worse than the intended effect so intended effect means what was meant to be cured what was meant to be countered that that okay whether that got countered or not that disease might still be there that 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 part of the body might still be harmed uh, maybe maybe recovering or maybe staying as it is 
but some other part of the body becomes far more inflamed by that when that happens then that is definitely considered a contraindicative effect and that's should the doctor has to take responsibility now i cannot do this i have to be extremely careful i i cannot indulge i cannot succumb to this tendency i have to take responsibility similarly we could say our purpose might be in correcting one misconception may create many other misconceptions so if that is happening it may make in create correcting one misconception we may create many other misconceptions and if that's happening that means this is contraindicative and if it's contraindicative stop it stop it don't give in to this don't uh, don't don't use this medicine don't use this particular strategy uh, don't use this particular strategy in speaking so what would this mean in terms of outreach say for example shila prabhupad himself when he was asked what do you think about uh, so xyz especially when he was asked in public prabhupad's general mood was that uh, he, he would not address the person he says sometimes he would say i don't think about that person now that might seem insulting but prabhupad said i think about krishna and i think about krishna's message sometimes prabhupad would say that that what is their philosophy and then prabhupad would respond to that philosophy so what happens is if we consider that um let's see here is the speaker and say here is an audience now the audience has a particular conception mm -hmm. and the speaker has you could say the audience conception is somewhat wrong the speaker's conception is is correct correct truthful in the sense of it is benefit is based on scripture now what the speaker wants to do is in one sense the intention is to transmit to transmit to share the conception so we could say so just using the word right and wrong conceptions we could say that these are more aligned conception that means the person is more aligned with truth nobody can say i know the complete truth but you can say okay my uh, if whatever is the truth uh, somebody who is a who is a speaker who is a teacher their conception is more aligned the other person's conception might be less aligned so aligned with what with truth we are talking about satyam hmm? so less aligned conception with the truth and the purpose is when we are transmitting or sharing we want to get the audience to a higher level conception to a more aligned and more aligned understanding of the reality and understanding that is more aligned with the truth a more evolved conception so if you could say aligned or evolved conception we could use that word now the the when we talk about people hmm, so here if i put it that in the same diagram i'll continue over here i'll make it a little bigger over here say for example put it in the center so if the person has a particular conception now in their conception for example that person might be very very important that person may be an object of reverence and that person's teaching their philosophy philosophy might actually be in the background that philosophy might almost be of irrelevance for them 
oh this person was such a great saint this person did such so much national uh, so work for national awakening this person has done so much humanitarian work this person has done so much work for uh, say establishing the prestige and honor of india across the world so their philosophy here i put it uh, that philosophy has it's in the background of that person's awareness so now when they have reverence that reverence could be for various reasons that reverence could be for their humanitarian work hmm? that reverence could be their pro national work hmm? that reverence could be also for hmm, cultural work so they may have done certain things to protect the culture or they may have done some things to uh, in general uh, establish respect for so you could say generic dharma generic dharma or spirituality not specific so people may have reverence for various things and when we focus on the philosophy and then we try to counter the philosophy then people don't really see the philosophy they say how dare this person is so great how dare you criticize this person who do you think you are to criticize this person so generally what happens is whenever there is criticism hmm, when there is personal criticism now by personal criticism could be that criticism of the person's uh, personal criticism can be mean many things so it could mean criticism of let's put it this way that it could be criticism of persons habits persons actions okay it could be also the criticism of persons statements hmm or you could let's not put a statement let you could put it as a person's opinions mm -hmm. it could be that criticism of persons mm, opinions can be there are many different issues opinions i am using them as a little more contextual i can have different opinions on different issues there can be the criticism of the person's teachings mm -hmm. so now what happens is that when now all of these could be considered personal criticism so now each of these is actually related much more closer to the person so sometimes i i was talking about the medicine having a contraindicative effect so our intention of our speaking might be to correct the a particular misconception to challenge a particular opinion or a challenge a particular teaching of that person but the result might be that people don't see that people say who are you people say that in people's minds that person is an object of reverence so in general in communication there are two aspects there is reason there's the reason logic and then there is emotion so we can say reason at uh, it addresses the head in our bhagavad gita philosophy you can call it intelligence and emotion addresses the heart or in the gita's parlance we could call it the mind so if you see notice krishna does not just trivialize or minimize the mind or the heart he says anudvega karam non agitating satyam so not so priyam pleasing when he saying this he consists he tells us that we need to consider the emotional part of the communication also so that is, now shila prabhupad himself was actually very expert and he knew what effect what statements would have where and when and that is why he was especially in the communication meant for public prabhupad's public communication that means 
when he so what he wrote for the public not what he spoke in his private morning talks or his private darshan unfortunately all of that has become public now but but the communication that prabhupad used in public or that was intended for public Bhopal is actually very restrained overall. Restrained means that he didn't target persons. He didn't lever leverage personal criticism. He would use the generic term Maya Vadi, and then he would he would challenge some of their teachings. He would criticize some of their teachings. So now that in general has a long tradition. in india but when personal criticism is le- is leveled then that can have a huge contraindicative effect and that contraindicative effect is something which we would like to avoid as much as possible and if we learn okay this is what happens over here now some people may say okay this is compromising now we we shouldn't care so now should we care for the result now if you can say if you look at prabhupad zone teachings see prabhupad prabhupad was uh prabhupad teachings or prabhupad strategies if we consider you know prabhupad was a profound and deep person and prabhupad many made many different statements so for example on one side prabhupad said don't compromise and my guru maharaj didn't compromise i didn't compromise you also shouldn't compromise and that is a statement that we like to quote frequently but then prabhupad also said falena parichayate falena parichayate that means see the result what is the result that is happening what is the he also said a thing is known by its result now if the overall result is turning out to be negative if the overall ultimately people are becoming more against us than for us then we have to be careful maybe this is not the best strategy to use now at one level shri prabhupad would say that it is better to have one moon and a thousand stars if you are selling jewels not many people would come that prabhupad said that kind of things but then prabhupad there are times when prabhupad would be very happy when large number of people would come for program prabhupad writes in his purport thousands of people are coming and prabhupad would be happy it is so the point is do we have to always choose so it's in between this don't compromise and falena parichayate so in between is the principle of anukulya sankalpa accept the favorable avoid the unfavorable so and what is favorable what is unfavorable that has to be judged according to time place circumstance desh kal patra so when we consider what is the time when are we speaking this so if we uh, sorry where are we speaking it desh kal patra so i'll elaborate on these three points and then we'll open for questions so if we consider desh desh is place now why does the place matter the place matters because for every one of us it is essential that we recognize that whom are we speaking to or rather where are we speaking which forum is it is it a insider forum is it outsider forum is it so broadly speaking we could say that there can be four modes of communication there are insiders and there are and we could insider outsider hmm. and we could say then we can have insider to insider communication hmm. then we can have 
insider to outsider communication so let me explain this so insider to outside outsider communication could be say for example our gita gita course it could be discover yourself it could be essence of bhagavad gita it could be journey of self discovery or it could be intro classes one time programs we are invited to colleges we are invited to various venues this could be the bhagavatam class hmm? this is more or less insider to insider we also had the bhakti shastri course hmm. now outsider to outsider could be say what is said about us in the newspapers hmm? what is said to about us in wikipedia and other encyclopedias so now we may say do we care for this well we need to because why do we need to care care for outsider to outsider communication because our insider to outsider communication all is going to be limited we are not going to be able to reach to all outsiders and so we could say why care because our reach is going to be limited and then also our credibility is going to be limited why is our credibility going to be limited you may say we are actually teaching shastra our we should have the highest credibility no it doesn't work like that because if we are a insider then people are going to say that you are always going to speak good only about your own message your own philosophy your own teachers it like if i want to buy a new cell phone okay if i want to buy a cell phone of a particular company say samsung then i go on the samsung website and see they are always going to speak good about only about their product if i want to know how good it actually is i am going to go out and look for some independent reviewers so similarly people may want to hear from us and people may come and hear from us but then people will look at okay what do others say about hari krishna so what is the for example people may see us doing kirtan or distributing books or in this age they may hear something about us on her about on the internet they see a youtube video see a forwarded message but after they will google us they look at us in wikipedia and they will consider those sources out or they will just ask their friends have you heard about the hari krishnas what do you think about them or leave alone hari krishna what do you think about the bhagavad gita so our reach as well as our credibility is going to be limited so outsider to outsider communication how is it going to be that is important and i say we don't care for our reputation well it's not that simple we we have mahaprabhu he says sanyasi ra alpa chidra sarva loka gaye that even a small fault in a sanyasi everybody will speak about it he was talking of course about the character of a sanyasi but the principle is there now it is not that mahaprabhu's followers were criticizing him that people in general so the outsider to outsider communication is a matter of concern that is not the sole matter of concern that is not the sole parameter by which we decide what is to be done so now of course there's a fourth category is we could say outsider to insider communication so where we may learn about specialized fields so for example if we want to build a temple in a marshy area or in a in a area which is very where, where the soil is ground is not very steady then we may have to get some experts in that area to know okay what kind of architecture is supported here so like that in for, for particular specialized fields we may need to talk with special experts also so outside we won't go into outside it out inside our communication so much but when we are look at looking at the phalena parichayate so the place is here i am talking about which is the forum i am speaking at so in insider to insider communication certain things may be spoken but those things may not be appropriate in a insider to outsider communication and they are certainly not only inappropriate but completely counterproductive in one's outsider to outsider communication 
So Bhakti Vinod Thakur in Chaitanya Shikshamrita. Chaitanya Shikshamrita is actually a classic book for understanding how Krishna, uh, how Krishna consciousness or specifically Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Gaudiya Vaishnavism can be presented in a way that is attractive, that is appealing, that is rational, that is sensible. So there he says, I'll try to pull up the exact quote. He says, one should not try to establish the controversial superiority of one's own teacher. He says, one can, indeed one should believe in, in the superiority of such teachings. But we should not be focusing on this too much for others. So what happens is, if we focus on that too much, the result is that there is something which is meant to be communicated internally. And there is something which is meant to be communicated publicly. And understanding this difference is vital. Let me see if I can share this quote now. So, Bhakti Vinod Thakur is saying over here that, mm, but it is not proper to constantly propagate the controversial superiority of the teachers of one's own country over those of another country. Although one may, nay, one should cherish such a belief in order to acquire steadiness in a faith of your own. But no good can be affected to the world by such quarrels. So he's saying that you, that, okay, my teachers are superior. My teachers are the best. That faith one can have, indeed one should have. If we just naively think all paths are the same, then why should we commit ourselves to one path? So here you could say in this quote, Bhakti Vinod Thakur is essentially differentiating between insider to insider communication in which you can say, what is he saying? Cherish superiority of one's teachers. Hmm. But for other communications, other, other, other communications would mean primarily insider to outsider and also outsider to outsider. He says there is nothing that will be achieved by such teachings. So not proper to constantly propagate. So improper to propagate hmm? that superiority. Why? Because no good can be affected. So no good again is the falena parichayate. What is the result? What is the consequence? Is it beneficial? It is, is it benefiting others? Is it harming others? Is it attracting people towards the truth or is it alienating people to, from the truth? So, so the idea is that we have to consider the place. Which in the place in my sense, where exactly am I speaking? Which forum am I speaking? Now, this place is going to be related with Patra, and I'll come back to Patra later a little bit. But the forum in which I'm speaking, the, uh, the context where I'm speaking is important. And Prabhupada, as I mentioned, is insider to outsider communication, or the outsider to outsider communication was generally very restrained. So then let's move on to the Kala. So when we speak now, Desha Kala Vibhagavit. Mm, so dharma gyo, the same principle comes up uh, in twice in Bhishma Pitama's uh, conduct when the sages come to meet him. That's the first canto. It also comes in the fourth canto when Narada is giving instructions to Dhruva about what to do. So kala, kala means time. So in one sense, if you could say Prabhupada's time. And we consider today's time. 
So Prabhupada's time was the pre-internet age. And the pre-internet age means that actually communication was re relatively slow. If somebody spoke one thing, then for it to spread, people had to write physical letters, what we call as now a snail mail. Things would, would spread very slowly. But today's time, in the internet age, what happens is that there are three things which are very serious. One is the sheer speed of the communication is alarming. One statement is spoken. And that it just goes. It can just go in one moment across the world. Just one click and it's gone all over the world. Secondly, it's not just speed. It is often fragmented. Fragmented means that very easily from the content, just one part can be taken out. And that can be shared. Or even if one part is not taken out, people can just focus on one part and they may not look at the context. And we may say, oh, you should not quote out of context. Well, that is true. But it is for us to be aware of the hazards and to prepare for the hazards. Just like a doctor may say, you know, if you're going to take this antibiotic, take the antacid. Don't forget to take the antacid. Otherwise, there will be a problem. But still, the doctor should also be careful. Sometimes the patient may take, forget to take the antacid. And the, the antibiotic should not be such that if the patient forgets to take the antacid, the patient dies. No. So it is if the patient is not going to take the full regimen and the doctor says, if you're going to take this medicine, take this always and consider what is going to happen. So nowadays they try to you know, have multiple medicines together, multiple medical effects trying to be medicinal effects included within one medicine also. It's fragmented. And the third thing is it is permanent. The internet never forgets that what is there is there forever. We may delete it from our account, but somebody has already taken it and put it on their account. Of course, this does not mean, of course, nothing is eternal in the world. And as far as there is the internet is also not eternal. It may not, it will not be there in public mind for very long. In general, one controversy lasts only as long as some other controversy doesn't come up. So therefore, it is important for us to be aware that in this color, our communication can be actually very easily uh, misunderstood or misused. So both things can happen. Mm. So it can be, we may speak with the best intention, even if what we have spoken is nothing wrong, it can be misunderstood, it can be misused. People may misunderstood means people may hear just in people's mind one part only registers. How could you speak like this? How could you criticize this person? Or misused means somebody with an ulterior agenda will only take one part out of it and they will spread that. So it's so that so misunderstanding is a you could say a little more unintentional. Hmm? Whereas uh, misuse is more intentional. But either way. The point is, in both cases, we will be, whether it is intentional or non whether it is done with intention or without intention, we will be intention. So the, the intention, the tension, the anxiety, the agitation is going to be there. And we need to be aware of that. This is the Kala. And then last part is the Patra. Now when you talk about the Patra, Patra is the candidate. Whom are we speaking to? So, in general, whenever we speak, our purpose should be that its spiritual journey is like an it's like a step by step evolution. And if that person is here now, our purpose should be get that person one step forward. Sometimes we try to pull that person all the way up. But what happens in the process is in trying to pull that person all the way up, they just fall down and they go further below where they were might be also. They just can't come all the way up. And so this taking one step forward means that 
this is the gradual approach and you could say this is more of the radical or radical or confrontational approach you know you are wrong and you have to be you have to be made right well in not not every interaction we need to necessarily correct the philosophical misconception of a person so somebody asks us about a spiritual teacher so we could speak like prabhupad prabhupad has various strategies so you know in general so uh, we have the goswamis rupa goswami uh, says this yuga goswami also says this that to so keep three things keep your guru keep your mantra keep your ishta dev he says keep this go payet private he says that there's no need to publicize these to the world hmm? so we could say principles principles of dharma principles of bhakti whatever are appropriate over there principles of dharma these we could say are universal these are to be propagated so when we are speaking okay where is this person how can i help this person move forward it's especially if when somebody is asking a question about a particular person at that time it is extremely unlikely that in one interaction in one question answer especially in a public forum when somebody is asking a question that we can in a reasonable way change people's opinions especially about a person philosophical conception through logical reasonable presentations we can we can help people come to a particular understand a higher understanding but when it comes to persons people don't always think with reason they think with emotion so at that time there can be generic appreciation there can be generic appreciation for overall spirituality chanakya pandit says that look for the good in everything so look for the good in everything he says that look for gold in filth and in general sara grahi good in everything be an essence seeker so bhakti no thakur also talks about this point of me sara grahi so when we are interacting when we are asked about a particular spiritual teacher specifically we can be sara grahi and speak something about uh, about points of agreement now we may say are there any points of agreement well okay philosophically there may points of difference but there could be points of agreement and just emphasize that there is no need to broach the points of disagreement in public forums go pay it that there is a appropriate forum for that when that person has the appropriate level of shraddha and they are at a particular level of uh, spiritual evolution those points can be broached on so shila prabhupad when he met when uh, Sar- uh, saragrahi would mean say for example somebody asks us about any spiritual teacher now different devotees of course will speak in different ways and that's uh, depends on a particular devotee's mood particular devotee's emphasis particular devotee's nature and but the important point is are we helping people come closer to krishna or are we causing people to go away from krishna and in general the idea is that we could speak yes that to at a humanitarian level this person has done a good amount of work to help poor people or at a national level the spiritual consciousness and the spiritual awareness and the pride in india spiritual legacy this particular leader has done next is a done a great job in awakening that pride in india's in in indian youth this particular leader is this particular organ somebody asked a particular organization oh the they are in excellent way continuing the 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 glorious tradition of architecture and they are building beautiful temples or you could say this person is you know doing a lot of good work in terms of taking care of cows inspiring people to take care of cows inspiring people to live simply so when it comes to teachings also if we consider our teachings all our teachings within our teachings actually philosophy 
is only one part of our teachings. But there is there is so much about culture in our teachings, and within the culture there is so much that could be of agreement. So oh, our teachings are not just philosophical. When Prabhupad met uh, Doctor Pat, uh, who is that? Uh, Mishra Yoga Studio. Prabhupad met Doctor Mishra when Prabhupad had went. Had gone to America initially in New York when he was staying. He was staying with Dr. Mishra, and Pro, no, Mishra was a uh, Advaitin, uh, what we might call as Mayavadi. And uh, Prabhupada found that that environment was not very suitable for him to share Krishna Bhakti. So eventually, left went to the Lower East Side and started off Lower East Side and continued Krishna Bhakti. Prabhupada continued that, but eventually, later on, many years later, when Ms. Dr. Mishra came to meet Prabhupada. And they had a very nice talk. I think they had lunch together. And then some of Prabhupada's disciples asked, "Prabhupada, we thought he was a Mayavadi." And Prabhupada's reply was profound. He said, "Prabhupada said philosophically, we argue. We argue like anything." Prabhupada said, "But culturally, we are friends." Culturally, we are friends. So, Prabhupada was able to make that differentiation, and he kept that in mind. So, similarly for us, even in teachings, we could appreciate some of their teachings which are not contradictory to our philosophy. We don't have to zero in on the philosophy itself. We could talk about beyond the culture. You know, we don't even have to talk about the teachings of the person. we can talk about outside the teaching there the contributions of a person and uh, contributions of the person they could be positive so in some ways we consider shankara acharya and the advaita vad our vaishnava acharyas had to refute that but advaita vad also created a found or created like a basic foundation by which uh, the nihilistic schools of thoughts like buddhism and jainism were removed and people at least came within the vedic fold so we could say that because of many spiritual teachers there could be we can appreciate the same point about patra i just conclude with this so you know there is we could say gaudiya vaishnav truth hmm? gaudiya vaishnav truth even about the, uh, so then we could have Sorry. Mm. Then we could have Vaishnav truth. Mm -hmm. Then we could have Bhakti truth. Bhakti means it's personalist, but it's not necessarily be to Vishnu. It could be some other form. Then could be generally Vedantic truth. That they respect Vedanta, they respect Upanishads, they respect the Vedas. Then you could go further beyond that, and you could have broad Vedic truth. so somebody just respect yoga and we had recently the world yoga day and people are practicing yoga they may have no philosophical interest but still they respect it and then beyond vedic you could have hmm, just theistic truth hmm? and then beyond theistic we could have even basic satvik truth so we could say each of these are levels which this is not come out very well so we could say gaudiya vaishnav then vaishnav then we could have vedantic then we can have vedic then we can have theistic then we can have satvik so there could be various levels of truths gaudiya vaishnav vaishnav hmm, bhakti vedantic Mm, vedic theistic and each of these are a step up so if somebody is actually helping people develop some level of shraddha in the vedantic uh, texts even if their conclusion of the vedanta is different we can appreciate that because of them people are at least reading bhagavad gita they are reading the upanishads Uh, because of that people are turning towards bhakti uh, bhakti yoga or, or towards uh, the broad vedic literature are turning towards god so prabhupada wrote a letter to pope john paul to saying that all of us should come together 
and we should work to counter misconceptions we should counter atheism so we need to look at what is common and highlight that and in that way the result that we have will be beneficial will be constructive and not destructive it will be hitam it will be beneficial so i'll summarize what we discussed today uh, we discussed about how to if at all we have to criticize how to communicate sensitively how to criticize sensitively how to um, talk about other spiritual groups other spiritual groups other spiritual teachers how spiritual traditions so the first thing i talked about is we consider three parameters uh, overall we discussed the content the consequence and the intent so in content we speak that we speak what is truthful satyam in consequence we discuss what is pleasing and then what is what is helpful what is beneficial and intent we discuss that is non agitating so i discussed how do we go about applying these principles that was uh, the key focus of that ask a key, a key such discussion and i used the medical metaphor for understanding this that the doctor may have a party give a particular medicine with a particular intention and that intention might be good the medicine might also be right but sometimes it can have a contraindicative effect we don't blame the doctor we don't condemn the doctor in that case but still the doctor has to take responsibility and okay i won't do this in future so we can have contraindicative effect that means medicine can be contraindicative it means what basically healing one thing but much worse than that is it ends up harming other things so we may correct one conception but in that process we may end up harming other other conceptions we may create more alienation so in that connection i discuss three criteria how do we understand what is the contraindicative so i discussed about this non uh, truth means we discuss it is aligned aligned with pratyaksha um, anumana shabda depending on the context of what truth we are talking about in terms of non agitating we try to have that attitude of service of compassion then in terms of consequence we have to look use our intelligence to try to estimate what is going to effect of this and then we have to observe so in now the part of the observation we discussed we can observe based on desh kal patra so in desh i talked about these four kinds of communication insider outsider and i discussed how bhakti no thakur says that that what is appropriate for insider insider communication the controversial superiority of one's own teachers that might not be applicable for uh, that should not be done for insider outside uh, or, or outside outsider kind of communication so there are so basically understanding which place i'm speaking at is also important and then after that i discussed the kala we are living in the internet age and that means that we are all vulnerable we have to take far greater responsibility because the speed the fragmentation and the permanence once it is there we may delete it but it stays on that's it. we have to consider it and finally it's patra patra means we don't have to necessarily elevate everyone from where they are to the level of shuddha bhakti it could be just one step forward so especially in public forums we don't have to necessarily challenge people's philosophy uh, especially uh, we, we don't have, we, can, we don't have to definitely counter a person we don't have to counter even their philosophical teaching there could be a points of agreement in cultural teaching so if they just get a general appreciation for something that they already appreciate and say oh you are a broad minded person you are an intelligent person your body say makes sense so in general in public question answers it's best to take a intel approach and later on when that person has become more of an insider then more esoteric truths can be spoken appropriately thank you very much hare krishna